What is up you guys, it's Jerry from Team Unco Studios back again with another really quick basic tutorial for you guys, okay? Um, this one we're gonna just kind of break down tracks, uh, how to open different tracks, uh, programs and how you put programs in, uh, key groups, plugins. We're gonna kind of go over a bunch of different stuff and then uh, just know we're gonna be making and branching off different smaller videos to what I'm talking about as far as key groups and, and plugins and, and all that other stuff, you guys. But for right now, we're just gonna kind of break down tracks and how track view works and uh, you know everything that kind of goes along with your inspector and, and the tracks section, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into it, you guys, all right? So if you take a look at the screen here, Again, like I said, if you just kind of navigate to the top left here, this is where we're going to be focusing on today for this tutorial, you guys. So if you notice right at the top here of this uh, little section, we have bars. We kind of went over bars and how bars work and everything. So I'm not going to really go again too, too much into that. Um, we all know bars uh, identify where you want the beat to drop and all of that kind of stuff. And it kind of works as far as uh, time signature as well and how long you want certain things or how short you want certain things, okay? So that's the way bars work. The one thing we are going to go over is how do you extend bars, right? So let's say I have two bars here, but I want four bars. All you're going to do is click into the box and just put a four in there. And if you hit enter... You can just pull this down here or, or drag it up and you see I've got four bars and not two here. It's important to establish how many bars you want at the beginning of your song, um, you know, and, and what your loops are going to be like and all that. So I'd recommend keeping it simple for now. Two bars, four bars, eight bars if you're feeling like you're getting the hang of it. Uh, but two and four bars is where I would stay for now. OK, for right now, because these are basics, I'm going to stick back to two and boom. All right. Now. The next little guy under is our loop. Now you would think, well, why do I need to be able to turn the loop on and off? Which is a great question. This loop is gonna play on a constant. So if you noticed now, I have my metronome on, I've got 120 and I've got the loop off, okay? So this loop is gonna play until the end of that and then it's gonna stop, all right? Now, if I turn this loop on, it's just gonna play this for infinity. It's just gonna keep going. Now, if I'm recording something, I might not necessarily want the end of what I'm recording to bleed into the beginning of my loop. So this is why turning loop off is important because if you just turn it off, then it's gonna stop at the end and it's not gonna bleed into the beginning of your loop, okay? So that's why they have that. And there's other reasons when we get into sequencing and all that, all right? But that's how loops work. So moving on down, this is our track strip, okay? First rule of tracks, guys, and how tracks work, label your tracks, please, okay? For mixing engineers and mastering engineers like myself, it makes it so much more difficult when you bring me a project and nothing is labeled. It makes us go, oh my gosh, this is going to be fun, right? So super important that we label our tracks and we make sure that we keep everything nice and clean within our workflow, okay? So... The first thing we're going to do is we're going to label this track. So I've already got a little bit of drums kind of worked up here for the uh, beginning of this tutorial. So we're just going to go ahead and label this drums, okay? All right. So what I've got is nothing super crazy. It's just really basic, okay? So how do I get this MIDI information now to sound what I want, right? Well, again, if you remember in some of my drum videos, we're just going to go to our little program guy right here. And we're going to open up this little down arrow and we're just going to open up that grid hits kick. And there is my loop. Okay. Okay. So I've kind of got this little eighties kind of thing going on there. Right. And, uh, that sounds fine. Everything sounds nice on time. And this is just a two bar loop. Really simple. Okay. So let's say now I'm, I want to add in some bass, right? Let's, let's go ahead and add in some bass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go find a spike bass first, right? So let's go ahead and say I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to my F9 instrument beats edition, right? And most of the expansion packs we use and everything, guys, are stock stuff that comes with the MPC beat software. Some of this might, some of it might not. This is, I'm using the MPK Mini Mach 3 um, for these tutorials. Uh, if you get it, the DAW comes with it and usually the expansion packs come with it. Um, I don't know what they've recently been doing at Akai, so we're trying to use as much stock stuff of, as we can, okay? So now that I'm on my instruments uh, uh, edition here, I'm gonna go to my program and I'm gonna open up my instruments and I'm gonna bring in my spike bass, right? So I just want a spike bass here, right? Something simple. So uh, yeah, I replace it because I'd already put it in there. And now I'm gonna go over to my key groups 
and here it is. Now, some of you might be asking, well, wait a minute, these pads over here, I thought these pads were identified to these pads. They are. And what I want you to understand even more than that is the pads are identified as programs. Programs more than they are the actual pads, right? Because we program the pads. So you can kind of, you know, put those two things together, programs and pads, they kind of go one and the same. So this is the reason why the Instabase is in a program because it's programmed for us to be able to use on our keyboard, okay? So now that we've got this, uh, you know, spike bass in here, I wanna make sure that I'm on a different track and not this track, because if you notice, I've still got my MIDI information here and I don't want that information here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and navigate myself over. Well, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this back to my original thing that I had there, right? Which is this grid hits kick, right? All right. Now I'm gonna open up a new track. So I'm gonna to go to my second track and I'm gonna open it. And again, I'm gonna identify my track right away. So I know this is my bass, right? But my 80s kit is here, right? So again, I'm gonna to go to my key groups and now there's my spike bass there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and lay something down over this. Something quick, guys, we're not making you know full songs here, okay? So. So something like that sounds fine. So again, we got something basic down, okay? So we're just using this two bar loop right now, okay? So that sounds good, it sounds great. Let's go ahead and add another track, okay? So again, we're just gonna go to our little arrow guy here and we're going to go to the next track down which is three which is labeled by saying unused um, most everything in mpc beats works like that if it's not being used or whatever it'll say unused or something like that or it'll just give it a number like for instance if you notice right here if i add in another program here it's just going to give me a program number so in order to do that like let's say i didn't want the spike base anymore i want a different a different plugin um, or a different program, I'm just gonna hit that little add button, guys, and it's gonna add me another program here. And then I can now go and program this to be something that I want, or I can come over here to my expansion packs and grab a program and it'll also throw it into this folder, okay? But for now, I want that Instabase to be on this program. So let's go ahead and go to our uh, third track. And now if you notice, the Instabase is still defaulted there, even though we're not gonna use it, right? Let's go ahead and go over to our plugins, okay? And now with our plugins, we've kind of got this other little thing, right? So the way that plugins work is it's just basically something that you are going to plug in, you know, in so many words, to what we are, you know, going to be creating. So in this case, we are going to be plugging in synths to our uh, you know, keyboard here in order to play. Under that is our presets. What do we want to set that synth sound to do? We know we're using the synth. What synth do we want to use? So we've got all of these different, you know, things that we can choose from and lists and lists of stuff, right? So let's go with something basic. Let's just go here and let's just go with some uh, simple sync, right? And now um, I'm going to go ahead and have that on my keys. Okay. Now, Again, it is super important that you identify everything that you are doing, okay? So our track three, we know I want this to be synth, all right? When you work with your plugin, and we know this is what we want, go ahead and rename that synth. Oops. Okay, so now we've got them both labeled synth and synth. Okay, so we know track three now is synth and we know that this is where it's at and this is the program I'm using because I've labeled it as such, right? So let's go ahead and play our track. So we laid down something simple, okay? Again, it's this is just, we're, I'm not even really 
getting creative. I'm just kind of giving you guys an example here, okay? So now that we've got our three tracks, okay, we can always go to track view and look and see what our tracks are here, okay? Let's go ahead and say we wanna add another synth over the top of this one, okay? So we're gonna go to track and we're gonna go unused track and now let's label this one synth two, okay? All right, so we've got synth two now, but I've still got synth in my regular window here. So I want to now get a different synth and a different sound. So what I'm gonna do is again, go to this little plus sign here and hit add, and now it's gonna give me a different plugin, plugin two. So this is my second one that I'm using. And now I'm gonna use a different synth. Let's say I'm gonna to go to my default here and I'm gonna to go to something more lead. And let's say I'm gonna use this chill out synth, okay? So now I've got this chill out synth. Again, it is important to label your plugin. So go synth two. And now we know that our synth two is here along with this track four, okay? We know that this is where it belongs, okay? So let's go ahead and hit our track here. Okay, so again, you guys, um, you know, we laid a little something down. It's nothing crazy. But now that we've got stuff laid down and you guys can see it here. So I've got four basic tracks, drum, bass, a synth, and then like a second little synth I've got here. Okay, this is it in its totality right here. Okay, here is my two bar loop. This is it right here. I can see all of these bars here. Okay, now let's say I wanted to double this. Let's say I want to work with four bars now, not two. Well, you would think you would just go into your bars here, right? And you would go backspace and hit four, oops, and enter, and voila, there are no MIDI information that came out over here, or there is no MIDI information that came out over here, right? So how do I get it to where I duplicate this to come out as four bars because I want it four bars, not two bars, right? And that's a great question. There's a couple of different ways. So way number one, which is the most basic way, and this is how most people do it on MPC Beats, is you're just gonna double the length of your um, loop. Now, the rule with doubling your length is to just know that when you double it, it's going to double by the highest number each time. So again, if you go four, after four, it's gonna go eight, and then after eight, 16, and then 16, 32, and on and on and on. It's gonna, it's gonna double it by that next number each time. So that's important. And the reason why is it it's important is I will explain. So in order to do it, the first way that I'm telling you is you're going to go to your file commander. You're going to go to edit. You're going to go to sequence. And then you are going to go down to where it says double length right here. The third one from the top. Okay. So again, I'm going to do it one more time, you guys. Okay. So again, you're going to go to your file commander. Okay. Top very left corner of your screen. These three little lines. You are going to go to edit. You are going to go to sequence and then you are going to go to double length. And when I hit double length, you'll notice now, boom, I've got now four bars here instead of just the two. OK, now if I do it again, OK, so I'm going to go here, edit, I'm going to go to sequence and I'm going to double the length again. Now I've got eight bars of that same. OK, now if I just go command Z a bunch of times here. Okay, back to my two bar loop. There is another way to do this. And I've seen people do this when they're in a workflow. If you just go ahead and go to and do what I did first, which was just add four bars and hit enter and get this little, you know, blank spot here. If you just highlight everything with your cursor, okay? And if you hit command C, that is copy. And then if you just bring your cursor to the next starting bar, and hit command V, boom, you have now another copy here. And I know people like to use that because it's quick and it's easy for them to be able to, you know, navigate without having to go to file and then edit and do all that stuff, right? So there's another way to do that. 
you know, and this is the other way of doing it, just copying and pasting. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. It's really quick, just a quick way to open up, make sure that you are identifying your tracks, you are labeling your tracks, all really important stuff. Hope this was helpful, you guys. Again, like I said, we have lots of other videos coming out. We're going to try to pop them out like hotcakes. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Until next time, I will see you guys. Peace and love from Team Uncoordinated, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you